Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy John D. Graham. He's going to tell a great story about hanging out with The Clash. I believe that I was 19, and I was playing with The Skunks, which is one of the first three punk rock bands in Texas. And we were at the tail end of the Armadillo. The first time I ever set foot in the Continental Club, we had opened for Joe Ely and The Clash at the Armadillo. And it was one of, I mean, to say it's a life-changing thing, uh, beyond life-changing, you know. Okay, so we come out, we we open up, and this is a beautiful thing about, about the Armadillo World Headquarters was the clash, which, you know, people call it punk rock, people call it this, people call it that, but they were heavy lifters, right? And so the place was packed. And we came out to, to play, and we were a power trio, you know. So we go out, and we play, and I'm looking across this audience, and it's just a sea of cowboy hats, mohawks, and ponytails. You had the hippies. You had the, the, the punks. And you had the cowboys. And they were all in the same room together. There was no fighting, no Pushing, no nothing. This is this this was the armadillo. And nobody knew what they were about to see. Because like the cowboy hats came to see Ely. Punk rockers came to see the clash. The hippies just came to see what the hell's going on here. <laughs> and so they came out. Like we, we had a good show. And then Ely, of course, I mean, that was with the Maine's brothers in the band and uh Jesse, you know. Jesse Guitar Taylor, unbelievable, unbelievable, just like through the roofs, just. And so then they they left stage. And so I got up in the wings, and I see them coming down the hallway, and they've got guys on either side of them so nobody can talk to them, right? And they get out on stage. Stage is completely dark. Lights come up. And Joe Strummer counts off London Calling by going, bang, bang, bang with the microphone stand. And it was just on a wooden stage. And when they went into London Calling, the place just the place just went nuts. And so we were just watching this, and I'm like, wow, this this I I, I know what I'm seeing is important. And I know the political ramifications. I know the cultural ramifications. But that doesn't even describe how and why it's so important. And so I just soaked it in, you know. And so show's over. Wayne Nagel, who he tour managed Charlie Sexton, he tour managed Will Sexton, Right now, he's the tour manager for uh, the offshoot of Creedence Clearwater that does not include John. Revisited. Revisited. And uh, he ran the ARC. He was also back then part owner of the Continental Club. And he'd been trying to get us to play there, but the other members of the club were like, "Uh uh-uh, we don't want any of this punk rock stuff. Why do we need that? So Wayne said, ride with me. We're going to the Continental. We went over. That was the first time I'd ever set foot. And went in there, and I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I get it. And um, by then, it was close to two. The people who owned the Continental Club, Roger one night, who had done One Night Downtown, which was this big blues club, um, Wayne Nagel, um, Roddy, this guy named Summer Dog, who was badass. Anyway, they basically got us, and they're like, okay, anybody that needs to leave, leave now. And we're like, wait, what? People went out the door, and... <laughs> Crossbar came down on the door, and they're like, we're here till sun up. 
And so we were like jamming. I got to jam on Not Fade Away with Joey Lee and Joe Strummer. Um, I fought the law. I got to play I fought the law with Mick Jones. It was like, it was surreal, you know? It, you, were you already a fan of The Clash? Were you hit to them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yes. Absolutely. But there's something different about being a fan of The Clash and hanging out with them because all of a sudden they're real. They're not, it's not a fan thing. It's like, I mean, Jeff Strummer was a really, really sweet guy and also really, really smart. I mean, we all at various points, as you can imagine, it's a Continental Club in 1979 we talked a lot. It just went on and on and on and on. And then finally the sun came up and they threw back the crossbar. Did I mention I was still in college? I was in Plan 2, which is a honors program at UT. Very demanding and very, very... Uh, my brother went through it, so I had to go through it, but not for me. And I had a class that day. And so I left the Continental Club, and I went, and I got all my books, and I got all my stuff, and I'm, like, walking down. And I walk into one of those big amphitheater classrooms, you know, the theater classrooms. I'm looking around, and all of a sudden, it's like in the movies where the sound goes. Whoosh. And I'm looking, and I went, oh, I don't belong here. <laughs> I took all my books and I went to the bursar's office and I said I'd like to withdraw and they said would you like to see a counselor and I'm like no 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 I know exactly what I'm doing withdrawing now do I get anything back <laughs> you know and from that moment forward you know it's it's um, I always knew that's what I wanted to do but I was trying to Please, parents, please, society, uh, stand up in my brother's shadow, all this stuff. And it's like, I'm sorry. This is not this is not what I was supposed to do. But you know what? The truth is, I, I'd make the same decision today. <laughs> Everything led up to that. And for me to ignore that, oh, yeah, I stayed up all night jamming with the Clash. Okay, well, back to biophysics, you know, not going to happen. I actually, I, I met, I met Mick Jones again um, later in, uh, in L.A. And I had to sort of remind him, and he was like, oh, at that crazy club. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, exactly. Anyway, um, and that. And there's other things I blame it on, but that's the chief thing I blame the current situation in my life on. <laughs>